This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi there! Today we'll make a crazy project that took more than one month of work. A lot of technical difficulties, buckets of epic resin, success and disappointment. All this in one video. And in the end we get a transparent hood for the car. Enjoy watching! This story began when I came up with the idea to make a transparent case for the car. And then, to his misfortune, Andrew came to visit me. Then he had yet known that he would stick with this project for more than one month. In general, I do really appreciate those people who listen to my crazy ideas and immediately say, cool, let's do it. As a result, it turned out that Andrew had a matrix for creating a fiberglass hood for the 5th gen Honda Civic, and by the way, he owns Honda Civic too. By the way, he processed it with wax. Such hoods are made in two parts, and then connect with the sealant. As a result, these matrices made the work a little easier. But they were only needed to make a new matrix. But first thing first, after the matrices are processed with wax, we dilute the gel coat, on which the fiberglass mat is then put. It's needed so that the front side is smooth, without flaws, craters, which would definitely remain if you immediately throw on fiberglass. As a result, this white layer will be the facial one. The main difficulty of the project, as we thought, is to cast it from epoxy, so that it keeps its shape, but excludes stiffening ribs as much as possible. Therefore, the main thickness will be 1 cm and up to 3.5 in the ribs. Accordingly, we need to get such a blank. In order to significantly increase the layer, a special material is used, called Cormet, to build up a layer of 1 cm with the fiberglass that would be a long song. Actually, you see Cormet on the screen, and fiberglass will lie already on top of it. After impregnating the polyester resin and drying, they become very durable. And when the resin is mixed, we begin to assemble the sandwich. Resin, fiberglass, Cormet, fiberglass again, this is such a sandwich. From the second matrix, we decided to take only the extreme stiffeners, so that the hood center was as presentable and transparent as possible and nothing distorted the picture. Here the same procedure is done, but without the core mat, since we need to get a hollow profile, which we will later connect to the main part. And this, by the way, is a special roller with metal needles, with its help air bubbles are perfectly expelled, and in general layers become even. Polyester resin dries faster than epoxy, and the next day you can work with a workpiece, which is what Andrew is doing. Using a two-component automotive putty, we smooth the surface, since both the front and the lower part of the hood should be perfectly flat, since the hood will be transparent. The stiffeners will look like this, but not quite like that, more accurate. But for this, we still need to work with them. The inside of the hood is sanded so that the stiffening frame lies on the flat surface. The black thing is developed in powder, applied in order to emphasize all the nuances, craters and deep scratches. Before priming the workpiece, thoroughly degrease it and then apply a thick layer of primer, which works like a liquid putty. As a result, we have an evenly applied layer, which will allow us to bring the surface to the ideal. Of course, not only it, but also Andrew's hands. Now you can glue the load-bearing structure, although in fact our entire hood is a load-bearing structure, since it's at least 1 cm thick along the entire perimeter. We take our load-bearing hood out of the mold and here you can clearly see where the white gel coat was applied. The surface is flat, smooth and perfect. And all that is superfluous is ruthlessly cut off with a disc grinder. The two parts are connected to each other with a special sealant. In order to hit the mark, we do this with the help of mattresses. We tighten with bolts around the entire perimeter and leave it to dry. It's clear that in this form it doesn't suit us, so we are finalizing the joints. 
Andrew is already finished work and is covering the joints with putty. Then half a day of grinding and finally we have a shape that, in our opinion, is suitable for casting the same one. But from a transparent epoxy. But of course the surface must be perfect, so another coat of primer is applied. So there is a shape here. The front part of the matrix suits, it remains to make the second part of the matrix, in order to end up with such a sarcophagus, into which it will be possible to pour resin. Everything is thoroughly lubricated and rubbed with wax. It serves as a release agent. And then, according to the worked out scheme, gel coat, class mat, polyester resin, you know. At the stage, by the way, one mistake was made, which put the entire project at risk. But more on that later. Many know that in addition to creating unusual cars, our workshop also creates smart tables. Finally, we decide to make it for sale. Of course, no business can be successful without a working and usable website. It's possible to make such a website in approximately 10 minutes on the platform Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. For this, you need to choose template and customize it for yourself. In a few clicks, you can personalize your site. And what I like about Squarespace is the ability to see how the site will look on the different platforms. It's easy to make changes and you don't need to be a programmer to set something on your website. Number of ready-made templates over 100. All of them are free and available in a choice. Also, all these templates have adaptive layout. All are made qualitatively and correctly displayed in all types of different devices. There is no problems with editing the site. Everything is clear even for novice users. Editing content may be performed by men not familiar with the layout of web page and programming. The Squarespace base has many controls, animation and fonts. All this can be customized for yourself to create an individual style that no one has. You can save 10% using code access garage when ordering. And we continue. When the resin has dried, we remove everything unnecessary. And you can unpack the sarcophagus. Now everything is clearly visible. We have two parts of the matrix, from which we remove the hood, which was made in order to make the correct matrix. Now it can be thrown out. And of course, when everything is ready, I appear with several buckets of epoxy. Before pulling two parts of the matrix to each other, grease everything with wax. In order for the hood to be fully functional, we need to fix mountings for the hinge and the hood lock striker. And then Andrew had the idea to make a mortgage in the form of a Honda emblem. It turned out really cool. I really appreciate and respect this approach. Since the resin is very fluid, a hole even a half a millimeter is enough for all the resin to be on the floor. And the shape, by the way, is not at all simple. To prevent the ceiling from getting into the fill, we make a side of double-sided tape and only then thoroughly coat it with silicone. And finally, we come to the penultimate stage. We assemble the foam and tighten it with bolts around the entire perimeter. For such a massive fill, the compound called model 10 is perfect. According to our calculations, the whole hood should have taken about 20 kilograms. That's exactly how much I mix it. But looking ahead, I will say that I've never been so wrong. In the last moment, we decide that that just a transparent hood will look cheap. And we slightly tone the compound. And a thickness of one centimeter, it will be barely noticeable. But in general, it will change the picture. It was decided to fill the resin using a homemade vacuum unit. As you can see from above, two tubes are mounted in the mold. Resin will flow into one of them, and air will come out of the second one. In principle, this is how it all worked. I put one end into the bucket, and through the second hose we began to pump out air, and the resin slowly ran into the mold. I understood perfectly, well, that the volume of resin will be large, and of course, this process must be controlled and understood what is happening there, especially if you are testing a new compound. But it was all very slow. The compressors were pumping out air hummed endlessly, and I decided to continue manually. The pouring process eventually took more than 5 hours. For the future, hoses and holes just need to be made larger, hour after hour, liter by liter. It is already 2 am outside, and then I realized that I have already filled in more than 20 liters of resin, and the hood is not even half full. And the worst thing is that I ran out of this compound, and another compound cannot be poured until this one begins to set. And here the same mistake. The second part of the matrix, which gives shape to the lower part of the hood, swelled and formed such a buildup. 
Now it's already clear that it was necessary to make the load bearing structure outside. But the matrix itself is pretty solid and sturdy, and we thought it wouldn't deform. As you understand, all the resin ended up here. But I decided to add resin to the bitter end. Two days later, when the resin began to set, I added another 25 kilograms. As a result, almost 50 liters were spent on the hood. I understood that this hood was no longer suitable as a hood. But it was necessary to feel it in order to understand all the nuances that constantly appear. So this is a test sample, having received which will know exactly what needs to be improved. To be honest, I have never unpacked anything with such interest. Children's gifts under the Christmas tree are simply resting in the corner. I think you can see it in our face. In general, Andrew did a great job. I'm very grateful to him and given the approach and attention to the details. I take off my hat here. By the way, we have never separated the form so quickly, and finally a miracle. Overall, it worked out great except for this epoxy buildup, but it has form on the underside of the hood. And in the next revised version, we will get rid of this nuance. And I just have to polish the hood. I'll say honestly, I didn't buzz it too much, because it was a defective version that will go to junk. And the very next day we put the hood on the car. There were many questions about how durable it is. So everything is for you. First of all, we remove the all sealant, which was applied in order to make a tight connection between the two parts of the matrix. In the first part, we put the blank of the hood, which was made to create the foam, and we clothed it with the second part. By the way, it was it that was inflated last time. In order for it to take the most correct shape, we tighten it around the perimeter of the bolts, hole by hole. The next step is to grind the matrix so that the next layer of resin will firmly fix to the surface, scientifically speaking, for better adhesion. We glue all the screws around the perimeter with scotch tape so as not to smear them with resin. The main problem was that a large area without stiffeners deforms very easily, which is what happened. Therefore, using improvised materials and glue, we create a frame, which we'll wrap with fiberglass. First, we mix the polyester resin, not to be confused with epoxy, and get to work. Also, last time it turned out that there were not enough balls around the perimeter, and in some place resin oozed a little, we are correcting this nuance. The next day, when the resin has cured, we have modified rigid matrix, although it's heavier by several kilograms. Now you can get ready for the fill, for the second fill. We attach the spruce to the sealant. Through them we'll pull the resin.
but before assembling the matrix, it's necessary to lay the hinge and the bonnet lock into it. Andrew is busy making it. As you can see, the retainer is made in the form of the Honda logo, and since the hood will be completely transparent, this little thing will nicely complement the picture. The next step is to apply release wax, otherwise the hood will have to be installed together with the matrix, which doesn't fit into our plans. We glue double-sided tape along the entire perimeter, it will create a border, and the sealant will not get into the matrix and, as a result, into the film. Now it remains to lay all the components and it will be possible to connect the two parts. The next day the sealant is dry and I mix the resin. A compound called Monolith 10 from Artline was perfect for these purposes, since the resin is very fluid and curious in the 7 days. All bubbles will come out on their own. Another lesson that we'll learn from the last pour is that pouring in a thin stream from a bucket for a 5 hours is not very convenient. The section of this hose was made thicker, and such a mountain was built. After 7 days, the long awaited unpacking. This time it seems no surprises, but it will become clearer after sanding and varnishing. After we made sure that the casting is crystal clear and without flaws, we decided to slightly modify the hood and build a small neon letter into it. To do this, we put it on the CNC and cut out three letters, so familiar to lovers of Japanese cars, JGM. The next step is to put flexible neon on these niches. Yes, I know that this is essentially not neon, but a simple ribbon in a soft diffuser. However, it's called flexible neon. We glue the inner part with tape and coat the entire perimeter with sealant. We make a small side of the sealant in order to fill the layers with resin with a margin. A few days later, when the resin has cured, we remove all excess. In the final, it remains to cover the hood with varnish. Put it on the car and evaluate the result. Then the best way to promote it is to share this video anywhere, as well as give a like and a long comment. Thank you and catch positive attacks from the axe.